What's up guys, it's me Couch Mills here and season 2 is finally among us and there's a ton of freaking changes. We got changes to so many different heroes. And on top of that, a new map Shambali and a new character Ramatra. There's a ton we got to break down and talk about. But in pursuit of being a full-time content creator, I'm going to be doing my first stream today where we're going to be doing tried free for all tournaments for the winners to actually earn a battle pass season 2 for free. So if you don't want to miss out on that and you want to support the channel, Go follow my Twitch in the links down below and make sure to participate later today. Now, season two is kicking off with an absolute bang, and this changes pretty much across the board, but let's hit some of the ones about the maps first. So now with control maps, whenever a point is captured on control, the team losing control of the points counts as having contested the point for the purposes of overtime, even if they were not present. So overtime will still trigger, and it's not going to be like you had it, and it gets flipped, and then it's over right away. I know that was really confusing before, and a bit frustrating if I'm being honest. It felt in a way you weren't properly rewarded for having control of the objective in the first place. So yeah, that's changed. Now, of course, we're getting the new map Shambali and Ramatra being added into the game, but keep in mind that Ramatra will not be able to be picked in competitive for two weeks. So we're going to have a no Ramatra meta. But if you want to know exactly how good Ramatra is, you're going to have to wait for my tier list, which is going to come out later today, breaking down exactly what characters are good and bad with all the changes and where they fit in the new meta. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Now, we do got to talk about the first big change on the patch, and it's Doomfist. So we're going to read off all these changes. The Rocket Punch impact damage range increased from 25 to 50. Wall Slam damage range decreased from 10 to 30, and Empower Rocket Punch Wall Slam duration range reduced from 0.25 to 0.75 seconds. Non-Empowered Rocket Punch stuns for 0.25 seconds on Wall Slam. Minimal time to cancel now set to 0.12 seconds. Cooldown reduced to 3 seconds. Now, there's a lot of other things that we got to break down and talk about. But ultimately, what this does to Rocket Punch is it allows Doomfist to take fights in open space. Because his impact damage is increased and his slam damage is slightly decreased, now he gets to actually just punch people not into walls and still do a sizable chunk of damage, which is going to be better overall for Doomfist not having to take fights very, very specifically on a certain section of the map. In addition to that, the fact that a non-empowered punch stuns for 0.25 seconds on wall slam, all of this is actually just making Doomfist a lot better, and we're not even done here. Power block cooldown reduced to 7 seconds, and the duration increased to 2.5 seconds. Minimal damage mitigated needed to empower rocket punch now 80 damage, so it's less than it was before. You're going to be able to get your rocket punch empowered a lot easier. Meteor strike now empowers a rocket punch on landing, and the enemy's slow duration increased three seconds so not only are you going to slow an enemy for more time but you're going to pop in with a freaking fully charged punch and you're going to be able to do more damage in open space now so it all kind of comes together to make doomfish just overall more powerful and more efficient at actually getting picks and kills and making plays and then even in addition to that he has more passive so maximum temporary health increased to 200 health temporary health gained per target attack with abilities increased to 40 health so yeah doomfist is freaking cracked i mean a lot of us complained about doomfist i even made a damn video talking about why uh doomfist really really needed buffs he was just really weak and now we're gonna be in a doomfist mess so yeah doomfist is freaking insane all of these come together and you can kind of picture just doomfist being an absolute menace and uh he will be he will be but uh let's move on to Junker Queen, the torso and head hit volume size increased by 12%, so it's going to be a little bit easier to hit Junker Queen because, like uh, the developer said, she was really slippery, and uh, yeah, she was a slippery bastard. So now, it's going to be possible to actually shoot her because her hitbox was like, like the size of a squishy, and she's not a squishy. Now, Rampage wound duration reduced to 4.5 seconds, cost reduced by 10%, Commanding Shout cooldown reduced to 14 seconds, and the Adrenaline passive healing multiplier increased to 1.25 damage dealt by wounds i think all of these changes are pretty good for the character it doesn't really paint the full picture for how good she's gonna be post these changes but i do think that she's gonna be a fair bit more powerful even if she's easier to hit these abilities are really important adrenaline and commanding shout in particular those are really really big buffs and i'm excited to see where junkie queen's gonna end up in the post patch meta Next up, we have damage, and the damage passive no longer provides movement speed bonus. That is insane. 
no longer provides movement speed bonus to damage dealers. That is really, really, really big, and it's going to affect damage as a whole. But to offset that, because if you just did that, you would just heavily neuter the damage roll. So they actually increase the reload speed bonus to 35%. Now that reload speed bonus is really going to help characters that have a hard time having the ammo they need when they're in the middle of a fight. I can think of like Ash or Cassidy, characters that can heavily benefit from getting a kill and then being able to reload to go in for more. So uh, it's not going to affect every character the same, but uh, I do think that overall this is going to be a damage nerf. But to move on to some more specific changes, let's talk about Bastion. The configuration artillery, so delay before projectiles drop reduced to 0.6 seconds, explosion damage reduced to 250, no longer damages self, minimum delay before firing consecutive projectiles reduced by 20%. So overall, this is just making his ultimate like a lot better. Being reduced to 0.6 means that you might actually kill someone with this damn ultimate, as opposed to before where against anyone that even just started to move the second you activated it they could get out no speed boost needed and uh yeah it's gonna be a lot easier to like solo ult and ana and like guarantee a kill next up the reconfigure cooldown reduced to 10 seconds this is just nice changes to bastion i don't think this makes him really great or anything like that but it makes his ultimate a lot better and overall some nice buffs to the character that was pretty weak comparatively to most characters in the game Next up, we have Sojourn, and this is a controversial one and a big one that we have been talking about, and uh, yeah, she got hit hard. So, Railgun, energy delay before draining reduced to 5 seconds, secondary fire damage fall off starts at 40 meters, secondary fire critical damage multiplier reduced to 1.5. This is really, really important because you're not going to be able to one-shot people anymore, which is insane. 190 is all you can do. Secondary fire damage now scales with energy from 30 to 130 damage. Primary fire damage per projectile increased to 10. Overclock energy charge rate increased to 20%. Now, all in all, this is putting more power into her primary fire and a lot less power into her railgun, adding fall off to the railgun, making it so the energy delays a lot quicker, so you can't keep your charge up very easily, and you're not going to be able to one-shot people nearly as much. Now, this puts Sojourn back in line where she should be. She is going to be like a good DPS still in a lot of ways, especially because they are increasing the power level of her primary fire. Still, for the people that couldn't hit consistent railgun shots, this is going to feel like a buff like for the most part this is going to feel actually a little bit better than how she felt before unless you were someone that did hit consistent railgun shots and then she's going to feel far 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 worse my only fear with this is now soldier's just going to get a mercy pocket and she's going to feel like exactly the same so uh yeah i don't exactly know how that's going to feel but Overall, the character is way more in line with where she should be, and I think that these are all good changes. I know some of you are going to say, hey, this is a little bit heavy-handed, but, uh, you know, you can always scrub it back later on and buff her back if she needs it. But in the meantime, I think that these are all great changes for just meta balance. Next up, we have Symmetra. Photon Projector, Beam Charge Rate and Decay Rate increased by 20%, Primary Fire Ammo Consumption Rate increased by 10 per second, and Primary Fire once again gains ammo from damaging barriers. This is all just nice stuff for Symmetra. I don't think this is going to make her insanely meta by any means, but as the developer said, Symmetra does have a pretty high win rate across every single rank, but she doesn't see a lot of play. So I think a lot of times they want to increase the perception of Symmetra, because she's a character that really should see more play, and perhaps just based on community perception she does it so yeah the next character on the list we have tracer pulse pistols damage increased to six now they are removing the bug for tracer so i think this will make tracer kind of feel the same from my understanding it's an increase in power to her but the bug was increasing or preventing her drop off so in some distances, I think this is going to be a buff to Tracer's damage. Like from close ranges, you're actually going to be able to do more damage than you did before. But from the further ranges, it's actually going to have that fall off in place because the bug's going to be removed. So I think that this is still going to feel like a buff to Tracer because having more burst damage is typically more important than having more range. Now, next up, we're going to be moving on to the supports. And for the supports, we have Ana and Sleep Dart cooldown reduced from 15 to 14 seconds. And the developers said that Sleep Dart is still one of the most powerful crowd control abilities in 5v5, but uh, they wanted to increase her survivability overall. So they're reducing the cooldown slightly. Now, next up with Kiriko, what they're doing is the arm hit volumes with reduced 15%. 
added an auto wall climb hero option similar to Genji's. Kitsune Rush ultimate cost increased by 10%, movement speed bonus reduced from 50 to 30%, cooldown rate reduced from 3 to 2 times faster. Protection Suzu cast time reduced from 0.15 to 0.1 seconds. Kunai ammo increased from 12 to 15. Swift step ability input can now be held to activate. So what this is really doing is, one, it's making Kiriko a little bit easier to actually hit because for whatever reason, her arm like blocked her head hitbox making her one of the hardest characters to freaking hit in the game. And two, it's taking a ton of our power level out of her Kitsune Rush, which was like the best ultimate in the game. I mean, really, it was insane. It was winning so many team fights, and they are increasing the power of her Suzu and the power of her Kunai by giving her more ammo and making it so Kirikos will get more punished for being healbot Kirikos. Like, you can get away with being a healbot Kiriko a lot. You just heal, heal, heal. You're not doing a lot of damage because you can protect your team, and then also you just build up Kitsune Rush, which is the best ultimate in the game, and you win a fight with that. But with Kitsune Rush being a lot weaker, it's not going to win as many fights. So if you're only healboting, you're not actually utilizing a lot of the power that is being given to the kunai. So it's actually really, really important, this change. It basically forces Kirikos to go a lot more offensive and look for kunai value rather than just relying on rush and healing now next up we actually have mercy and they said that this change will enable mercy to better defend herself or even go on the offensive at times in 5v5 situations these occur much more often weapon swap time reduced from 0.5 to 0.35 seconds and the callus blaster ammo increased from 20 to 25 i, I said that completely wrong cadisus i don't i don't know i don't know i'm sorry <laughs> But yeah, DPS Mercy is among us. That's insane. And I think that that's actually pretty good. I actually have been dying to Mercy pistoling like more often now than I ever have. And it actually makes sense. There's just a lot more damage flying around in a 5v5 format with a lot more squishies. I think overall, um, this is this is good. I think Mercy kind of needed a little bit of a, a buff here. I was surprised that they didn't do more of a rework to Mercy and increase her power level more in one direction and decrease her more in another another but i think that she's in a good place and i think that this is actually a good change i know a lot of you mercy mains are actually gonna like this just don't uh just don't whip out that pistol when your uh, teammate is one hp and then not get the kill <laughs> you gotta get the kill you're whipping out that pistol you better finish it okay <laughs> And then there's actually season two map pools, which I'm not going to read out every single one, but I'm just going to show a picture of this right here. And I'm really excited to play on many of the maps that we haven't had in the map pool for quite some time. Super, super excited. And uh, yeah, dude, season two is looking absolutely cracked. I'm going to have a ton of fun. And uh, make sure you check out my stream later today so you don't miss out on the tournament to win some battle passes. And make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss out on my tier list that's going live later tonight as well. Thank you so much for coming by i really appreciate each and every one of you i'm serious i really really appreciate it and uh, i'll see you next time